Okay, good morning. Uh, inshallah, today is the third day for the course uh, IDC uh, called Tubing uh, Supervisor Level. Uh, inshallah, today we'll go uh, through the cold tubing part. Uh, almost uh, we'll finish the cold tubing except uh, small section. So I will start to share the presentation. Okay, as we said yesterday, there is a lot of cold tubing application. We can use the cold tubing for uh, cleaning down hole, uh, side tubing or casing, uh, in cementation uh, or cementing job, uh, like balanced cement uh, job, stimulation like acid sand control, nitrogen kickoff or nitrogen lifting, TT fishing operation, and uh, wired surface, which is uh, recording, logging, or perforation in highly deviated or horizontal well. Uh, CT completion like velocity string and CT drilling. This sum of uh, applications, if you look here from uh, left to right, this one running with cold tubing, you have assembly down here like nozzle for washing uh, fine sand or fill. Second thing is to drill or mill uh, scale inside the tubing. Uh, this one for balance. Uh, job or remedial cementing. Uh, this one is through tubing fishing operation inside the string. Here you can run to set or retrieve bridge plug or plugs from the well, drilling some plugs for clean out. Setting inflatable, this is the application we, we discussed before about the inflatable pucker. If you look here, there is interval for water source leakage. So you install two inflatable bucker, two section with uh, cold tubing and set in its place. Then you retrieve the cold tubing from and you lift the two uh, uh, bucker or inflatable bucker, isolate the leaking interval. Here is the pumping uh, like acid or stimulation to clean out the formation. Here we are running uh, with uh, TCV. You can run uh, perforation gun uh, to perforate the casing and highly deviated well. Through tubing, it can be also. Here, this is perforation. You can have a radioactive source, uh, E coil, then you set the perforation according to the depth, and then you perforate the casing. This one is called velocity string or siphon string installation. If you have a reservoir uh, producing gas, but you have high water cut ratio now. So at that moment, the uh, water will prevent the production for the gas. That's why we install the velocity string, the, which is uh, called tubing, hanging below the uh, safety valve uh, with packer, then we produce from inside the uh, cold tubing string, a small diameter. So we maximize the velocity and increasing the capacity or the delivery for the production of the full boom. This one is tubing completion. And this one is frack back job. This one is clean out cleaning fine sand or propane from the fracture job or cover the press. The fill hill can be removed chemically by bumping some chemical, uh, react with the formation and dissolve this fine uh, and uh, increase the uh, permeability for the formation or it can be mechanically through your running with jetting Tub or nozzle or motor assembly if it's compacted sand and you start milling or clean out through the well with the cold tube. The, this is a cementing job, can be squeezed or balanced cement job for isolation or for kick off plugs like you will do side track job. Stimulation job like fracture or acidizing or mattress acidizing stimulation 
with HCl acid or HF acid according to the type for the formation. Can control, you can bump gravel back or placement for screen to control the sand production, or you can inject special treatment fluid like resins, which is uh, uh, gravel or small gravel or sand, coarse sand uh, to uh, isolate the uh, sand production from the full pool. This is nitrogen injection or lifting well with nitrogen for kickoff or to uh, clean the well from spent acid after acidizing, or use foam some time to uh, cleaning or lifting the well. This is CT fishing tool. It, it gives you advantage like stronger than slit line or braided line in the pulling capacity with the CT. and also especially in highly deviated or horizontal section because you have limitation for a slip line or e line up to around 60 degree inclination <clears throat> you can also have uh, advantage for cold tubing fishing over a slip line you can pumping the fluid which help to improve access to the top of the fish This is a logging tool to run with E uh, coil, like uh, you have uh, uh, E line inside the coil tubing connected to the bottom hole assembly to give uh, logging or fishing uh, logging operation or perforation inside vertical or highly deviated well. This one is a CT completion. We use coil tubing from surface to bottom. Uh, instead of the uh, completion string or conventional completion string. For sure here, making completion of the well, it will be quick and easy uh, because you don't need to make a lot of connection while running inside the hole. CT velocity string, this is what we talk about. I will show you now the uh, I will share with you the case study. Here, this is case study about velocity string used in one well, increasing here gas velocity. This is application for Baker company. Gas velocity while reducing water production. In one well, flowing gas well uh, lose pressure because of the uh, density for the water uh, start to decrease the uh, production for the gas. So what they do, they running with cold tubing inside the completion string. Here, this one is you have pack off or packing element on the top for the cold tubing to seal inside the the wall of the tubing, and there is cold tubing here. The cold tubing in the bottom connected to two double bump out plug. This is as primary barrier inside the cold tubing while running in hole. After you running in the hole, you uh, uh, by pressure you open the plugs out, so you start to produce from inside the cold tubing to increase the velocity for the production. This is a case study. In North Sea, velocity string system objective was increase gas flow while minimizing the water production on the well that has been increased hydrocarbon production. They installed this system called Velox. This re referred to Faker velocity string in one trip with cold tubing. It's consist or uh, considered as eleven thousand something feet of two three quarter inch OD cold tubing was 178 AF and AR nipples with double pump open plug and wireline re-entry guide. By running inside, 
the top packer, this one, which hang the coil tubing from the top inside the uh, ID for the string, was set at 884 feet inside five inch, five and a half production tubing with steel pipe passing through four and a half OD tubing. The surface will hit pressure was 650 and bottom hole temperature about 250 and the version about 84 inclination degree. The result was three and half million standard cubic feet per day with an hour after the setting the velocity uh, strength system. And usually the velocity strength system installed below a tubing retriever or subsurface safety valve. This is one of the case study. And this is another one also. So uh, you mainly the velocity string used in gas well because the difference, if you have water between the density between water and gas, it will start to reduce the ability for the gas to produce fast from the well. Okay, back to presentation. Here is the CT drilling. You can use to re enter for re entry, especially in gas well. Uh, and you, you start to uh, produce from multilateral well. And this application I used before in Saudi Aramco, in one unit called tubing, especially for drilling. They drilled multilateral gas well. Uh, from existing uh, will. So now I am supervisor or engineer in the office for cold tubing. I need to have planning uh, for uh, cold tubing operation in one will. So what is the will information I need to get for the job plan? You need to know what is the will head connection and size for the connection to get proper connection to uh, nibble up or install your uh, pressure control equipment as a surface. You need to know what is the rated working pressure for the well head, what is the formation pressure and temperature down all, especially uh, if you have uh, some stimulation job because the acid uh, mixing or uh, cementing will affect with the down hole temperature. Uh, well depth. Uh, perforation interval, well bore survey, where the maximum inclination inside the well bore. You need to know about what is the fluid inside the well and what is weight to have calculation on pressure or hydrostatic pressure. The gas oil ratio, how much percentage for gas. It is uh, sour or sweet gas contain H2S for selection the material for bottom hole assembly and coil tube. Uh, what is the component including inside the completion string with all accessories to uh, know the minimum ID to select what is the maximum OD for your coal tubing uh, uh, string. History related to any downhole problem. If you have any history for any problem downhole before in the well, like sand accumulation, like uh, stuck or anything, you need to know to have contingency or emergency plan, or you have plan B in case of this one repeated. Going now to cold tubing equipment. This is mainly the cold tubing equipment in any cold tubing job. Number one here refer to control cabin. Number two here is the head for the operation, which is the power pack system. Number three is the reel for the coil tubing. Then it is goose neck or arc neck. This one is injector head number five, operating, pulling and running the coil tubing inside the full pool. This one, number six, is the stripper assembly, which is considered as the primary active barrier. Number seven is the blowout preventer, secondary uh, barrier. 
Number eight is the kill line used for killing operation. And then bottom hole assembly inside the well. This is a cold tubing pressure barrier. You have the primary barrier here, which is a stripper assembly. The stripper is packing element can seal around the outer the annular of the cold tubing during the movement or during static condition. So this is usually the active one. You can install one stripper or in some certain cases, according to the policy or recommendation, you need to have dual stripper together, two stripper assembly, in which cases you can use the dual stripper. In which case we use dual stripper or tandem stripper. Can you share your answer? Mr. Kumar, you have an answer? Yes, for the high pressure job. Okay, high pressure will. How much pressure to use the dual stripper? Usually for CAT 2 and CAT 3. Yeah, how much pressure? Okay, what also to use tandem stripper or dual stripper? Mr. Abdullah? Mr. Abdullah, you have an answer about using dual stripper together in which condition? Uh, so this is usually for uh, for cat two and cat three from eight eight thousand five hundred and uh, and above in our company. Okay. So this is just for the for to have the contingency if if one of those fails, so use it. Okay. Also, we can use dual stripper in some recommendation if you have high H two S well. So in high pressure environment, according to the classification uh, for the policy for the company, which is taken from some ABI recommendation, uh, and in high uh, percentage H2S well to be in safe side. And third uh, condition, if you have critical picking up or rigging up, like you are uh, near to a farm or a, a city or something like this, so you have risk, you have people around, so you need to have dual stripper during the operation. What is the advantage to have dual stripper in your operation? What is the advantage to have dual stripper during the operation instead of one stripper only? Ms. Hajar, you have an answer? Well, in case one fails, we will have uh, an emergency plan, something to back it up with. Okay, if you have one fail, so usually we activate first the top one. If this one is failed, so you will start to activate the second one. You apply some hydraulic pressure to stop the leak. Then you close the slip and fire prayer. So in this case, you have Two barrier isolate the well while fixing or changing the other stripper. But if you have only one stripper assembly, that means if this one is failed, you will stop. You need to stop to activate the POP to secure the well. Then you include the rams here. Then you start to open the stripper to change the packing element during the operation while the cold tubing inside the well pool. That's why the advantage here, you have double uh, or two uh, barriers 
if you if you have filled in one stripper, that means you have another stripper plus the BOB during the operation. Okay, now the stripper you can seal around the cold tubing and you can change the packing element during the operation. And this is the main advantage for the stripper assembly. The secondary barrier here, if the stripper assembly is failed, you will stop, you need to stop the cold tubing or the uh, movement to activate the secondary barrier. Usually the secondary barrier is the BOB, can be quad BOB or combination, which is called compi BOB. This one is quad BOB, four RAMs, four set for RAM. The top one is blind, the second one from top is shear ram, slip, and pipe ram. When you start to activate for sealing, you need to activate first the slip ram. So the slip ram will hang only the weight for the cold tubing to prevent any slippage for cold tubing while closing the pipe ram. After that, you close the pipe ram, which is sealing ram around single size for the cold tubing. So after you close the pipe ram, what is the next uh, action or step before you start to break and prepare the stripper or change the packing element? What is the next action or step after you close the pipe ram? Mr. Roger? Mr. Rajiv, you can answer. I don't know if it's on or what. Mr. Rajiv, or uh, are you on? Rajesh. Hello? Yeah. Yes, now, uh, because sorry, my internet was uh, the power gone and came back again. Tell okay. me what's the, what's the question? Uh, can you repeat, please? After I close the slip frame, then I will close the pipe frame to repair the stripper assembly. What is the next step after I close the pipe frame before I disconnect the, from here to change the stripper assembly? What is the next action? After I close the pipe ram. After you close the pipe ram, uh, we will equalize the pressure above through the equalizing valve. Okay. So we need to, as you said, we need to inflow test. We need to bleed off any pressure above and check the inflow test for the pipe ram. Yes. First we'll the... So first we'll equalize the pressure and then we'll bleed off from the kill port. And okay. then we will see the and we'll uh, we'll monitor for some time until we see the to see the inflow test. Yeah, you need to check that the pipe ram is holding the pressure for certain time, like fifteen minutes minimum, before you start to break or open anything above. So and you start to change the stripper assembly. So you need first to close slip and pipe ram. Look manually. You have manual look. Then you will inflow test, then you start to break any connection above. This is the procedure in tips. Tertiary barrier, this is the last option you can use during your operation. This one also you have here shear ram, and you have tertiary barrier also have shear and seal ram. The difference here between the shear ram and the quad BOB and shear seal. This one is not sealing gram. The shear ram here used only to cut the cold tubing. The cold tubing pipe is not the bottom hole assembly. After you cut the cold tubing, you need to have picking up like one meter up or three feet, and you close the blind ram without pipe inside the well. So the blind ram here is sealing ram. 
So we have two ceiling gram here, which is pi prime during normal operation or after cup, you close the line gram and then inflow it. So shear and the slip is not holding the pressure, it's not sealing gram. But for shear seal, which is last option, tertiary barrier, when you activate, you will cut the cold tubing drop inside the will pour close Christmas tree valves and then you prepare for next uh, run or next trip. This shear seal will installed in some operation just to increase the capability for the shearing of the cold tubing during the operation, especially in high pressure well. In, in some recommendation or in some policy for company, we didn't use this one, shear seal, because of the cost. They rely only on the shear ram and the quad BOB. But this is depend on where the leakage area, it is above or below the POB. If you have leakage area here, for sure you will not shear with the, this one because you still have leak from below. So you need to activate the shear seal ram. This depend on the depths or the point have leak or low on the depths. First, is this one is control cabin. It can be independent or truck mounted unit based on the design for the unit. Elevated location, so you have full view for all activity. What we can measure or what we can do from control cabin, we can do all operations for the cold tubing movement. For example, you have here control system, you can measure the load for the weight for the uh, strength, uh, depth measurement while running inside the well, the speed measurement while running inside the string or the hole, cold tubing inlet pressure, pump pressure, or wellhead pressure outside with sensors, traction force, this force for gripping force applied by the injector while running or pulling out of the cold tubing under pressure, which is called a snapping operation while running in hole under pressure and pulling out while uh, pull the cold tubing from the hole. The chain tension here, chain tension need, uh, needed for snapping or taking up the slack weight to not make uh, slack for the chain. We'll, we'll take about this one, talk about this one later. Reel back tension, hydraulic pressure. This is the reel back tension. It's applied from the motor and the reel of the cold tubing to make tension for the cold tubing while pulling from the hole uh, and coming back to the reel. Stripper hydraulic pressure. You can control the pressure to stop leakage about the stripper assembly. This is the first action you will increase hydraulic pressure without damaging the cold tubing itself. We'll control system hydraulic pressure for accumulator, injector, hydraulic motor drive pressure. Mainly all the system is working with hydraulic pressure. You start the motor and the motor start to give hydraulic pressure to hold the system. You can also read the engine RPM, level one direction and tubing real direction to adjust the cold tubing. Power back to start and the stop. You have bottom to start the power pack or stop the power pack while operation. Here also, this is important bottom inside the cabin, ESD system, which is called emergency shutdown system. You just use in case of emergency, like fire, explosion, or you need to have evacuation from the location. When you press, you will shut down all the power supply to the cold tubing unit, and you start to activate automatically the real brake. If it is not uh, automatic brake, you will you need to stop manually also. ESCD is available in another location according to the API like uh, remote control panel outside the location. 
or in some cases you have in the uh, power back unit. But for sure, you need to have some or second place for ECD and it's uh, beside uh, or outside the cabin. If you cannot access to the control cabin for any reason, you have another option to shut down the, all the power system from another place. Then you have a standby pump as backup to operate pressure control equipment, the POP, maintaining maximum well security in the case of the power failure. If you have complete power failure, you still be able from the pressure in the accumulator bottles to activate the POP to secure the well. You have for sure some gauges for uh, monitoring the parameters for the well. This one, one cabin from inside. After that, this one is a power pack system. Mainly this uh, power pack working with diesel or in some time cases working with electrical motor. But for zone two, which is the saver according to the industry or the recommendation, most of the power pack is diesel engine because less uh, cleanable uh, possibility during the operation. Diesel engine provide power, it give power to the system, to hydraulic pump, the hydraulic pump start to drive or operate hydraulic motors to operate the control for the whole unit component. In the power pack, you have the accumulator bottle here. This one is used for emergency to supply power to the BOB or the stripper and the injector flowing, following engine breakdown or failure. You have compressor for air supply system. And you have some safety devices like a spark arrestor, shutdown over pressure, over speed, overhead shutdown system, which is emergency system, if the pressure is very high, it will shut down by itself, uh, eliminate the explosion or fire to happen. What I can do from the power pack, you can feed injector chain with pressure to hold on the pipe. You can feed pressure also uh, for a stripper assembly to energize to prevent or stop the leak. You can start to operate the BOB from the accumulator bottle in case of emergency. You have some safety device, as we said, filter and strainer, this whole filtration of the hydraulic oil and heat exchanger. And also you have hydraulic, special hydraulic oil to operate the system. This one is classification according to general industry, zone zero and zone one and zone two. If you look for the requirement for zone two, you will find that the flammable is not likely to occur in normal operation. If this one is happening, it will be for short time, less than 10 hour period. That's why this zone two, we recommend it to have a diesel engine for the power pack system. For zone one here, the flammable can be happen occur in normal operation is about from 10 to 1,000 hours per year. Then after that, we'll talk about the cold tubing grill. What is the main function for the cold tubing grill? It is used to store and to protect the cold tubing around. The component for the cold tubing grill. This one, you have a real motor. Here, you have one motor or in the axe here. The real motor here is maintain some tension to control the pipe while running or back again to the reel. So you have some tension from this motor to have tension and yield on the pipe around the drum. So this one is responsible for the yielding or uh, uh, straight the cold tubing while going from the reel up to the uh, 
arc neck or it can be also responsible also for coming back from the well straight than rounded around the reel itself. Level wind assembly to ensure you have close even and efficient spooling on the reel. This one is called rotating joint. The rotating joint here, where you have uh, uh, or reel swivel, you have bearing system. The bearing system here is welded and connected to the axe or the shaft on the reel. And from outside, you connect your pumping system. So when the cold tubing will start to run inside the hole and rotate, so this swivel will start from inside to rotate while pumping, and the outer section is, is fixed uh, to the uh, surface section line of the pump. Lubrication system, for sure, you have wearing can happen to the cold tubing body outside diameter, while cold tubing pass through the roller system or the, through the uh, uh, arc neck. So this one, you need to have some lubrication system or inhibitor, applied inhibitor or protection for coated the coil tube. You have mechanical counter here for a measurement system or running in hole. And you have another uh, counter uh, inside the cabin is coming while running in hole through the uh, injector head. This crash frame, this to protect the cold tubing while handling or transporting. There's two uh, types for the uh, motor. One is called right angle drive, where the real motor here is floor mounted and connected by a chain drive to the axe here. Or another one is called direct drive. The motor here is mounted on the axe itself or on the shaft of the reel. This is some view for the cold tubing reel. This one is top view. This is the level one assembly to adjust the cold tubing. This one is side view. This is the motor. Uh, this is the swivel here in the inlet. This is the cross section for the swivel. You have bearing assembly here. This one is connected or will to the axe for the end for the cold tubing reel or the cold tubing inside on the reel. And this one is fixed and connected to the pump uh, section or the pump station. Level wind assembly where the cold tubing passes here through or around the roller, it will become to this point where this point is the injection or lubrication system before the cold tubing come and pass around the, up to the uh, goose neck and the uh, river. This one is a counter, mechanical counter to measurement the cold tubing dips. And usually because of the Elongation for the cold tubing usually have some error while running in the hole for the difference for the dips for the cold tubing because the elongation for the cold tubing due to uh, its weight or due to downhole temperature or the pressure bumping through. That's why there is a computer system can make some correlation about the dips for the actual dips for the cold tube. Here is a goose neck or uh, guide heart. The main purpose for the goose neck here is to guide the cold tubing coming from horizontal or straight or horizontal into vertical section. So to round maximum bending, it will be on the goose neck. That's why we said yesterday that the bending stress or bending fatigue, it will be the first effect on the life for the cold tubing during normal operation. Because the cold tubing is bending over the reel, then it will start to straight in this area. Then it will bend again, maximum bending 
here, then straight again to run inside the well. So this one, we cannot uh, eliminate this operation, but we can do some uh, selection uh, for the uh, equipment to extend the life or the effect of the bending cycle during the operation. So here, when it is passed to enter the top of uh, injector head, there is some rollers here. The roller will start to operate or pass the cold tubing around to reduce the effect of the contact or the wearing of the cold tubing when it pass over the goose neck. Here, there is the recommendation according to the API to try to reduce the effect of the bending or the maximum bending over the goose neck. So we need to select correct radius for, this is the radius for the goose neck. You need to select the proper one to have the uh, suitable bending over the goose neck for the cold tubing. For example, if the cold tubing size here, one quarter up to uh, one and a half, you have minimum requirement 48 inch up to 72 inch. If you start to increase the cold tubing size, for sure you need to increase the radius for the uh, goose neck to try to be more flexible and reduce the effect of the bending. So for example, three and a half here, you will go up to 120 inch radius for the goose neck. Do you apply this recommendation? What is the size for cold tubing used during operation? Sorry, once again. What is the size you do you use during operation for cold tubing? Uh, we use 120 inch. One? 120. 120? No, no, about, about cold tubing size. Ah, uh, cold tubing size we use from uh, 1.5 to 238. 1.5 up to 238, okay. Yes. So you, you use 120? Uh, we use 120. 120 for all, huh? Yes. Okay, so you select the maximum one. From yes. That. Okay. All right, this is the recommendation we need to follow to minimize the fatigue of the cold tubing string because this is the maximum bending over the goose neck. Now this one is the injector head. The injector head is responsible for the movement of the cold tubing inside and outside the well. This is the brake, like the brake for the car, for controlling the speed for the cold tubing while running or pulling out from the hole. It is referred to in some manuals, IH, referred to injector head. The purpose for the injector head is to provide the necessary force and the traction required to run and hold and pulling out with the cold tube. It consists of two motor hydraulic system. It will start to operate the motor. The motor will start to drive the uh, hydraulic system or hydraulic oil to all system. It gave hydraulic pressure to this cylinders. This cylinder try or start to give force on the chain here. Over the chain, you have the cold tubing passing through. So it start to grip the force around the cold tubing without cause damage to the cold tubing body. While running in hole, you have pressure inside the well, like well hit pressure 1000 or 1500 psi. In this case, you still have no weight for the cold tubing while running in hole with the first section of the cold tubing. So in this, this operation is called a snubbing force. You need to snub the cold tubing under pressure. So we need to calculate 
what is the force you need from the injector head to snap the cold tubing inside the well port. So you can calculate this force, force equal pressure by area. Area is the cross section outside diameter for the cold tubing. It gives you the required uh, force bound. Uh, you need to equalize to be able to snap the cold tubing under pressure. After you reach to certain depths with the weight for the cold tubing, you will exceed the uh, snubbing force. So you reach to something called balance point. At certain depths, you can calculate also. So at this point, you reach to balance point. At the balance point, you start not a snubbing operation, you start a stripping operation. You don't need uh, too much force from the injector head. It, the cold tubing can run inside its weight, overcome the pressure of the weight. This is called the snubbing force. So while running in hole, you need to have some pressure from the injector head to start to running the pressure or snubbing the pipe under pressure. When we said that the injector head uh, is 70K, what is the meaning for 70K? Like here, what is the meaning of injector head rating is 70K? It can pull maximum of 70K. Yeah, it can. This is the maximum safe pulling uh, for over pull is 70,000 pound. This is the meaning for the rated for the injector head. When you start to plan for any job, you need to plan for what is the maximum uh, over ball or pulling for the injector head, for sure it will be higher than the pulling you need during the operation for cold tubing. And you need also to select based on the maximum snubbing force or rate for the injector head. According to the design, you have the manufacturer uh, to give you this data. Usually the snubbing force have value of the pulling force. Here you can find the uh, snubbing uh, force like three, uh, 350 or 40K. So if your snubbing force or the pressure from well give you higher than this value, you need to increase the capacity or the capability for the injector head when you select. The injector head also control the cold tubing while pulling out from the well. While pulling out from the hole near to the surface, there is pressure coming from the well behind the cold tubing. It starts to eject or getting the cold tubing out from the well. That's why in this case also, you need to increase the gripping force around the cold tubing to control the movement pulling out of the cold tubing. So the basic function for the injector head include pulling the cold tubing string, which is tensile force. Pushing or snubbing the cold tubing string, the snubbing force. In case of emergency also, or shutdown in the hydraulic system, it will start to hold the cold tubing in stationary condition. So it will hold the pressure. Uh, and you have uh, additional brake, automatic brake, it will hold the cold tubing in its place without giving the chance to moving up or down. Guiding and supporting also the cold tubing string from the goose neck area down the injector head. This one is also another type for the injector head. Here is the cylinders. Take hydraulic pressure from the motor. You have two motor here. So when you start to have pressure from the motor, control from the control cabin start to grip the chain here or, or injector chain around the cold tubing running in the well. This one two type here for the chain. So this one is VDP or variable or V block called. And this another type is semi-circle block. The difference between these two uh, chain or injector chain, 
This one has wide range in the cold tubing, minimum and maximum cold tubing. This is the maximum and this is the minimum. This is the variable diameter. This one is used only for constant diameter or one size for the cold tubing. If you need to change the cold tubing size, you need to check or change this one, the uh, injector chain. Which type you use during your operation? We all have a standard of 580K. Sorry? We have a 580K injector with us. No, no, about this one, about the injector chain. We use the- uh, We have gripper box. So we have a uh, different size means whichever coil tubing you use, we use the same uh, gripper block. So it change each time you change the coil tubing, you will change that one? The block we here? Only, we will only change the blocks, yes. Not the whole chain, only the blocks. Yeah, yeah, the block only, yeah. The block here, this one uh, over the chain itself. So we need yes. to change this, this area, which is gripping uh, the, around the coil tube. Yes. Okay. There are two tension apply, as we said in the beginning. There is traction force. The traction force. This is the force to grip or inside the chain tension for gripping the coil tubing while operation. And we have another or outside force giving with another cylinder here. It give outside tension increasing while snubbing inside the well to prevent buckling for the outer area of the chain itself. So you have cylinders here for inside and you have another cylinder here for chain tension cylinder. If you look here, this one to give make tension for the chain to prevent buckling while snubbing or running under pressure inside the well. In some cases, you will find the cold tubing pipe is running away under its own weight. In this case, you will start to increase the gripping force on the cold tubing to control the movement or the speed for the coil tube. To reduce the vibration, there is a lot of vibration because of operating the motors here to motor. There is some vibration will happen through the injector head. That's why from time to time, you need to check the operating through the injector head. So in this case, we have absorber here in the bottom for the injector head. This uh, shock absorber accumulator mounted on the injector head to absorb any uh, vibration during the operation. This one the, is the cross section for the chain. You have roller here over the chain and uh, V block over here to gripping the cold tubing while operation. We finish the, uh, uh, that one will go through the stripper assembly or some, in some manual is called stuffing box. What is the main purpose for a stripper? It is mean that installed above POB and below injector head. It can be dual assembly two or tandem stripper, but the two stripper is considered as one barrier, but it is double or dual barrier. For some extreme well condition, as we discussed, you have hydraulic pressure activation from control panel. This only just to stop leakage. We will not continue uh, operating. We will need to stop to fix the leak or change the packing element of the stripper assembly. I see Mr. Abdullah, uh, Mr. Abdullah is here. Okay. Uh, can be redress or change during the operation with pressure isolated? Yes, it can be with the with pipe and slip uh, activated. Yes, we can redress the, the stripper. Yeah, this is also the main advantage. We don't need to pulling out from the hole with the cold tubing inside the uh, well. 
we can change the packing element into section around the culture. There are several types for the stripper assembly. First one, this one, number one, is called conventional stripper, which actually is all type of old style nowadays. Number two and the three, the same. This one is called tandem or side door stripper. This one, the tandem, because there is connection here. It can connect below the first stripper. That's why it's called tandem stripper but the same design like the side door stripper. This is the most common type used during the operation. And number four is radial stripper, like the ram for the POB. Which type you use during operation? We use, we use all side door strippers only. We initially used to use radial stripper, now we are not using no more. You use side door? Yes. Okay, and what about this one, conventional? No, uh, no, these are old. These are old type now. We are no more using them. Okay, so uh, we did are you? Using two, we are using side door like two door strippers, like two strippers up and down. Okay, did you use this one before this type radial before. stripper? Yes, we used before. Now uh, the, those all become obsolete now. We are not using them. Okay, in which condition you use the radial before? Uh, well, different sizes means it can take any uh, size of the pipe. Can take any size? Yes. This is, it can seal around any size, you mean? You can, yeah. Especially for different type of tools and uh, yes. Okay. This first one is a conventional stripper assembly. You have here the called tubing inside the well. And this is the sections component for the conventional stripper. You have non-extrusion ring where the stripper assembly fit on the bottom. And you have energizer with piston. So if I need to change the packing element, you have here, You have here port, it is called retract port. So you will start stop operation, close the POB, then you will release the pressure, then you start to have some pressure in the retract port. So the retract port will push all the system back. So you will open the locking pin from the top, remove the upper press, check this non-extrusion ring from anywhere, then you will change the packing element into section. Then you install the new one. After you install the system assembly again, there is pack port here. You will start to have hydraulic pressure to packing the system again to energize the system. So after that, you can uh, uh, equalize the pressure open the POP, then you can continue your operation. This type is only, it is well for assist to help to energize the stripper assembly. There is here port connecting the well pour pressure from bottom here, it will start to push the piston to make more sealing for the stripper assembly here or packing element around the cold tubing. This is the only type, the conventional stripper, we, it is called as pressure or well pour pressure assist. The stripper component are slipped into two and make possible to be redressed during operation from top. With an uh, IH frame provided the well pressure is isolated. What is the main disadvantage for this type? The redressing time here or it changing the packing element will take long time, like around one hour. That's why this one is all the type to use during this day. The second type, which is the quick and the most common type is called the side door stripper. From its name, there is two doors here from the side. It will be open after you isolate the well 
and we will start to change the packing element easily. If you look here, you have the same component. You have here upper press, pushing, and you have piston, non-extrusion ring above the packing element. And this one is retractable door. So you will open this door and get the two part of the uh, packing element out, check and change it. Then you will put new packing element around then you close the door and here there is port here for packing the system you will apply pressure so you will push from top here the piston to make seal around the cold cube that's why because the packing port from the top this one is not well pressurized assist like the conventional stripper the main advantage for this type is minimum time for changing the packing. It can take around 10 minutes, maximum 15 minutes to change the packing element during the operation, which is actually easier than the conventional type. This is a tandem stripper, the same like side door with connection uh, from top with the uh, upper stripper, used as a pack-up stripper. Allow also, we need, if you have leak in one stripper, you need to stop to have two stripper or the time. So you need to repair or change the upper stripper assembly. This is the last type for the stripper, which is called radial stripper. This one like the BOB ramp, for sure it will take time more than the uh, side door to change the packing element here. So this one also maximum time is around 45 minutes, long time. When I can use this type for radial, it can usually use in high pressure gas well and for larger size of the cold tubing, larger than or more than Two, three, eight. But what I know, this is only for one size for cold tubing. I don't know this is for wide for cold tubing size or not. In this, there there were two types used to come in radial stripper. So the first one, what I sold was absolute, and nowadays uh, we're using this stripper very rare. I Means with the permanent size. Okay, this one for one size. Yeah, one there, size. Is, there, there is, is two types of radials. I don't know what we call one is like that. Uh, it acts like an angular BOP, mm -hmm. uh, but it, it is not like that. Uh, now that become obsolete long term. Though. And this one also we used to use like uh, eight years back, and now we are not using this style. Okay, so one is for uh, several OD, and one is yeah. for fixed OD for code yes. Okay. Yeah. This one actually sealing during the uh, operation, uh, sealing this area is not like the pipe ramp. This one will not need to activate or make seal around the cold tubing. No, the cold tubing is passing through the packing element is sealing the will pour like the conventional or the side door stripper because in the POP ramp, you need to activate to seal around the coil or around the strain. This is the difference, but the same shape, like the ramps for the BOB, you need to open the two side here to get the packing element out. That's why it will take time, like around 45 minutes for exchanging the packing element. This one is especially with very high uh, gas pressure well, and for larger than 238 size for the coil. This one is the lubricator or riser section. Normally the lubricators is the same pressure rating for the pressure control equipment or the POB connected to the above the POB assembly to contain the whole lens for the assembly or the strength for coil tubing plus any fishing uh, assembly you will fish from the well. You need to have extra riser or lubricator, uh, extra lens above the height for the 
for tubing strain. Rated working pressure can be up to 15K, standard lens 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 foot. This one is the flow out preventer, which is considered now the secondary barrier for the uh, cold tubing operation. It can be secured the cold tubing and isolate the well pressure during normal or usual, unusual, or emergency situation. It is designed for ramps to hold pressure from below. This is according to the API. We use only the ramps and the pressure the ramps from the bottom because the ramps here is holding pressure from below, from the direction of the flow. BOB types can be ram or can be annular type. Did you use annular preventer before and rigging up cold tubing? Annular preventer? Sorry? For me, I've never seen. Okay. And uh, Mr. Abdullah? No, we don't use the uh, annular, annular steering point, so uh, I never use it actually. Actually, the annular preventer is optional uh, ribbing up the cold tubing. Usually, it is installed below the stripper assembly. It is only option. This one can be operated from the control uh, panel or hydraulic pressure of accumulator to activate when you, when you need to use, to isolate around various size of the bottom hole assembly. If you have long bottom hole assembly with various size, it can be sealed around that. That's why it is optional. We cannot use instead of the stripper assembly because this one, it is activate when you need. Okay, but the stripper assembly, it is closed type for the barrier around the cold tubing during the operation. But this one is closable type. So you close when you need or when you recover. So you have RAM and you have another which is optional. Uh, actually, we use this another if you have long assembly uh, or deployment system. Do you know about deployment system? When you have long bottom hole assembly, you will not be able to run enough lubricator. Yes, so, well, this we use, and especially our G shear is specialist in actually deployment. He uses it a lot in Kuwait. Yeah, for logging. You can, you can use the system with a special BOB uh, for deployment to the long bottom hole assembly. Call tubing BOB features uh, you have side kill port equalizing valve. The equalizing valve you can find only on the ceiling gram. So you can see in the pipe ram and blind ram only. You, you need to function test the blowout preventer after reading up and connect hydraulic hose or hydraulic system. Uh, and every seven days during operation, you need to function test. And then some policy for company daily function test, right? And you need to pressure test mandatory before we use all wire rigging up and also during the operation. Coil tubing can become in different shapes or number four rams. It can be combination or compi, dual ram or treble and quad ram uh, or quad BOB for set of the ram. Usually the cold tubing BOB is solid block, pure connections to try to minimize the leakage pass as we said yesterday in the monoclock Christmas tree. This one is less height and weight and potential for leakage. The RAM configuration for the compi is slip or blind by RAM for treble. It can be top blind, shear or slip and vibram. Quad BOB is a blind shear 
slip and the pipe. Which configuration you use during your operation? Quad or combi? We have a combi and quad. Combi and the quad. The triple is really used. I, I never see before, actually. No, we don't use triple at all. Okay. Actually, we have one. In Kuwait? We have one uh, triple BOP. Okay. This one is a quad BOP. Standard barrier, four set of ramp. If you need to activate, you will activate first slip. The slip ram is holding cold tubing weight without make any damage, but is not sealing the cold tubing or the pressure for the well. After that, the after you activate the slip ram, you need to check the cold tubing section. We closed around to check there is damage or not. This is the pipe ram, the bottom one. You close and seal around one size for the coil tubing. Shear, this it is capable of shearing or cut coil tubing without seal. So only it is cut the coil tubing itself, the body for the coil tubing, not the bottom hole assembly. But in some cases, if you have a small bottom hole assembly, its OD is near to the coil tubing, it can cut also by the shear ram. The shear ram, you need to check what is the maximum size of the coil tubing is able to cut uh, this size. That means any size below uh, or smaller than that one, it will be cut also with the coil tube, uh, with the shear ram. So you, if you need to change the coil tubing size, what the check you need to do in your system? If you need to change the size for the coil tubing during the operation, what is the check you need to do to, for your whole system or rigging up? Change the whole coil tubing and what to check on the BOP? You mean? Yeah, yeah, and all no, rigging up. To, to change the whole BOP actually, or change the change the ceiling and the, change the elements inside and the sizes of. All of it actually has to be converted and with the okay, stripper which, also. Which rams here you need to change? Ah, which rams? Uh, pipe and slip. So this is the main ones. Uh, yeah. The shield depends on the size. Sometimes any from 1.5 to 2 inch, it's one size. And above that is another size, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. This is, this is the one. So the blind will... Yeah. So the blind will not yes, you certain No, no, the blind will not. The shear, the shear will be changed depends on if it's above right. two inch or below two inch. That's it. Okay. Okay. You're right. Yeah. Certain, what, certain BOP. what also checking the ribbon up? You need to check. Beside the BOB. Stripper. Stripper assembly. You need to check because uh, if the uh, the size has changed, the stripper assembly also. Will change mm. the fucking element. What also? Injector, injector also. The injector, the radius for also goose neck. You need to check. So the injector, if the chain is not variable, X uh, size, you need to check the uh, chain blocks. Uh, and also, uh, you need to check about the uh, goose neck radius for recommendation uh, according to the size to reduce the bending stress for the cold tube. This is the checking you need to do on the rigging up if you change the size for the cold tube. Blind ram is not designed to cut the cold tubing. It's only sealing on uh, empty hole with no cold tubing in the well. Here you have pressure sensor. The pressure sensor here to give the pressure above and below uh, ramps uh, to the cabin. There is side kill port, this one, above the slip ramp. There is kill port here connected to the pump. The main purpose for the side kill port using only for killing operation. It's not using for normal circulation. 
to not to not cause wearing or damage to the five prime itself. So this one only for killing operation. Usually uh, the API or the job for the shear ram is to cut the pipe ram without cause damage to the top for the cold tubing. That means there is still access inside the cold tubing if you need to pump in through or from the kill port or you can pump through the annulus area. Here, this one is called equalizing valve. There is valve with hand screw. You can open first. It will give a chance to pressure below the ram to come above the ram. So you will equalize here the pressure before you opening the ram uh, under pressure. So in the in all rams for uh, wire line or cold tubing, you have equalizing valve to operate first. The equalizing valve while pressure test the POB must be in closed position to check the ceiling for the equalizing valve. This one is a simply for quad ram. This one is shear ram. And this one is blind. This is the ceiling. For sure, you need to check the packing element or the seal uh, elastomers from time to time and uh, check uh, the condition while rigging up. This one is slip ram, like teeth here in pi directional. It hold the cold tubing. And this one also a source of the damage with the time for the cold tubing. If you apply the slip ram many times, you will find some scratch on the cold tubing from outside. This is the pipe ram fixed on the one size for cold tubing. This one is compi UB ram. So you have two rams together in one block. This one is shear seal, the top one. You have shear in the top and the below you have the seal. And this one, by slip, first the slip ram on the top section to slip the cold tubing first, hang the weight. And then this one from below to hold the pressure from the well. What is the advantage using combi BOB over the quad BOB? It's less steps. Sorry? In case of emergency, we have to follow less steps. Okay, main, you have less steps. Is, okay. And uh, less, less stack height. Less stack height. Okay, this is two advantage. The combi ram and some rigging up you don't have enough space, so you need to use Compi BOB. It gives you less weight uh, and also less uh, height. At the same time, according to the well control, you need to activate two potons to operate completely the function for the BOB or one to seal around the uh, cold tubing. You just press one button, so you do two functions together. You will do the uh, slip and five pram together to seal the wind. This is steps if you need to shear the pipe and secure the well with the quiet BOB. First, you will close slip ram with hydraulic pressure and you need to lock manual. Close pipe ram and lock manual. Close shear ram, then you can open, pick up strength one to two foot or one meter around. To have no cold tubing through the blind ram, you will close the blind ram. You will do inflow test for the blind ram. Check there is no leakage through. Then you prepare for fishing or killing the well. Shear ram here can shear only cold tubing pipe, not bottom hole assembly. But in case, in some cases, if the bottom hole assembly is small or or the same in diameter like the cold tubing. You can cut also by mistake if you operate the shear ram as last option. Okay. Any question? Yeah, good with it. 
Okay, this one is the triple DOB, which is also rare configuration to use. You will find here the top one is line, second one is shield, and the bottom one combined between vibe and slip branch. So this one is triple DOB configuration. The same for pressure sensor and equalizing valve and also side kill port. This one is the combi BOB to set for RAM, blind shear together, slip and pipe RAM, pressure sensor and equalizing valve, side kill port. Advantage, as we said here, less height for rigging up, less weight and less procedures for a step, less time to secure the well. And here we consider only or the time is very important to start to secure the well fast as we can. The disadvantage here, high cost, if you cut and need to change, so you need to change the whole block. So it will give you more cost for maintenance. Okay, to this point, uh, we will stop for a break, 15 minutes. And after that, inshallah, we'll continue. Thank you.